these drivers are among the best in the world. There is no magic to their performance. They are talented and they are skilled. With high-speed competition, there is the risk of accident. But race drivers look to no magic to take that risk away. It is a risk they have accepted. When they leave super performance cars for their lower performance, soft sprung family sedans, do they leave the risk of accident behind them? Cars have come a long way in terms of their development in regard to performance, reliability, and safety. In racing, we have excellent restraint systems for the driver in the case of a collision to keep him securely in his seat. They are a shoulder harness, seat belt, and lap belt. Race drivers feel they often face more danger on ordinary streets and freeways than they do on the racetrack. Away from the track, there are fewer skilled drivers. Some cars in poor condition. Away from the track, the risk of accident is still high. Growth brings more and better highways. But these are an answer to the needs of more millions of automobiles, more millions of drivers. Greater traffic alone increases the risk of accident. Among those millions of persons behind the wheel are careless drivers, foolish drivers, drunk drivers. It is not necessary to drive too many miles to recognize that anyone who takes the wheel, good driver included, is exposed to a high risk of accident. Statistically, only a few drivers will drive a lifetime without involvement in a serious accident. What happens in an automobile accident is something most people don't want to face. Forces are involved that are far greater than the human body can endure. Most grave or lethal damage to the body does not occur at the moment of impact. After impact, unrestrained occupants continue in motion to meet death or serious injury in a second collision when they strike a surface of the interior of the car. Frequently, fatal injuries are received by persons ejected from the automobile. They may be crushed by the automobile, killed by impact with the ground or some stationary object, or struck by a following vehicle. A person who is restrained in place has a dramatically better chance for survival. Highway injuries and deaths could be cut in half if motorists would use their seat belts. Only one American in three consistently uses a safety belt. One in three recognizes the risk of accident, accepts it, and prepares to survive it. What about the others? All right. Come on. Ivan, you sit down. Sit. Toil well. Sit. Sit! All right, girls, you sit down now. Oh. oh. <laughs> we do this every morning on the way to school for carpool. And to have to do seatbelts up, too, is impossible. I've been driving uh, 15 years. I've never had uh, an accident or a moving violation. Besides, it messes up the clothes. <laughs> I can't be bothered with seatbelts. 
not very convincing. Highway deaths are approaching 60,000 annually. More than half occur at speeds of less than 40. Fatal auto accidents have occurred at speeds as low as 12 miles an hour. In three fatal crashes of every four, the victim is within 25 miles of his home when he meets death. This statistic alone should lay to rest the myth that seat belt protection is only important on freeways or highways. If a majority of drivers and passengers will not take a simple step to reduce the risk of injury and death, then is there a better explanation than that offered by the drivers themselves? Oh, I'm only going a few miles. Even a quick look around a place like this makes you aware that there is risk in driving an automobile. When people get into their cars, some of them recognize a risk and some of them don't. I wear them only on long trips around town. I hardly do 35. Many find good reason to think that people who seem unconcerned, people who seem oblivious to any risk associated with driving, may be more aware of it than is readily apparent. Not me, I don't need them. I never had an accident. Ignoring the safety belt and the risk, rather than an act of forgetfulness and unconcern, can be a purposeful act. It can be a kind of ritual that somehow magically removes the danger. I really don't mind wearing them, I just don't think about it. In effect, people say to themselves, there's no danger. But of course, if an accident does occur, this is hardly effective protection. Safety belt? No, not me. What, what if I go off the road into the water? Or the car catches fire? I'd be dead. The forces the body is subjected to in an auto crash were measured with anthropometric dummies a number of years ago, before there was significant use of seat belts by the driving public. These scenes from the original definitive studies of the UCLA Institute of Transportation and Traffic Engineering clearly show what happens in a typical collision. Upon impact, the automobile is sharply decelerated. Unrestrained occupants of the car, however, continue in motion. Massive injury occurs when the individual strikes the interior of the car or is ejected from it. Unrestrained children are even more vulnerable to injury than adults. Automobile accidents, for example, are the leading cause of death for children under 12. A child will literally fly around the interior to impact violently against interior surfaces or other passengers. The real-time duration of these scenes is from one to three seconds. But even with slow-motion photography, it is difficult to comprehend the enormous forces involved. At 30 miles per hour, a collision with a stationary object is equivalent to making a dive off a 30-foot Olympic high diving board onto your driveway. At 55 miles per hour, it is equal to a fall off a 100-foot bridge. The need for driver and passenger restraints is clear. Both child and adult passengers restrained by seat belts and shoulder harnesses have more than double the chance of survival than unrestrained passengers. To secure infants and children under four, it is necessary to purchase and install an approved restraining device. Safety belts and harnesses have been made an integral part of late model cars. Automotive engineers have helped make it possible for every driver and passenger 
who may be in an accident to reduce by over 50% his risk of serious injury or death. Driving involves risk. There is some danger, but with no appreciable inconvenience, it is possible to enjoy protection that is far more effective than the magic of saying, there is no danger. But a person who knows driving and automobiles recognizes the risk, accepts it, and prepares to survive the accident if it does occur. Sure, they wrinkle my clothes, but it's better than getting my face scarred. Buckling up is part of my starting routine. I may only be going a short distance, but an accident can happen anywhere. You never had an accident. Doesn't mean you never will. Common sense tells you that. Well, a belt keeps me in my seat and out of the hospital. Your automobile may not have the power and the speed of cars like these. But every car has power and speed enough to kill. Every driver runs a high risk of accident. Hi, I'm Mark Donahue. The modern car has come a long way. A long way in performance, reliability, comfort, and most of all, safety. The modern racing car also had safety. We have seat belts like these, and double shoulder harnesses, and also leg straps. We wouldn't consider leaving the pits without them. Many say it's safer on the racetrack than on the highway. Seat belts are easy to use. There's no excuse. Use them and be safe in your car. Okay, Mike, thanks a lot for your help. Anytime. Seat belts and harnesses are available for a very good reason. But they work only if you wear them. Make it a habit. It's a good one. You know, seat belts are really easy to use. Take a tip from a race car driver. Buckle up and be safe in your car. Safety belts work. Magic doesn't. Buckle up. Safety is no accident. <laughs> <laughs>